They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my God! Hello and welcome to the OSW Nugger You Review. I don't know why my voice is going. It's, it's sarcastic at this point. Uh, yes, it's your boy, Yaj. That's J spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and Evitz. <laughs> Nepets. Evitz is Steve backwards. Oh, Evitz. Yes. yes. Uh, we've got a Whopper review for you today, sir. It is Troll 2. Ooh, oob, a uh, a cat. Oh, take a boo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael Coleman Jr., who picked this. Uh, love you, mate. Hate your guts. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get to it. Michael? Yeah? Who are the goblins? <laughs> Troll 2, a 1990 horror fantasy relabeled horror comedy by director Drake Floyd. If that is your real name, mate, it isn't Claudio Fergrasso. <laughs> Starring a ton of people only known for this film. The son, Michael Stevenson, the dad, George Hardy, the mom, Margot Prey, and the sister, Connie McFarlane. Oh, the witch, Deborah Reed, and the daughter's boyfriend, Elliot, is Jason Wright. A cult classic infamous for its hilarious awfulness. It uh, plays around the world much like The Room or Samurai Cop of the horror circuit. That's high praise to put this movie in with those. Yeah, let's not. Okay, uh, I'll like, take it back. Uh, like, we'll talk about it as we go through, but um, no. No, okay, yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> uh, Steve-O, have you seen this film before? I've never seen Troll 2. I did see Troll when I was a kid. It's right up there with, like, Leprechaun and Return of the Killer Tomatoes and insane clowns from outer space and, you know, those really yeah, yeah, yeah. bad 80s horror movies that my dad loved and made <laughs> us watch. You mean he watched other films from <laughs> Terminator 2? <laughs> Terminator 2, exactly. <laughs> I've actually seen this film once before. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was actually at a horathon screening, but the problem is if you haven't seen the film, you're trying to follow the film. But if you see it with a bunch of people who have already seen it, they know the script inside out. So they're actually already laughing before the line happens uh. and you can't hear anything. So it was actually a horrific viewing session. Like I highly re recommend not doing it for your first time. Actually, I did watch this. Have the DVD. Huh? And here's a picture of the Blu-ray. Comes with Troll 1, Troll 2, and uh, Best Worst Movie, which is the documentary about the making of this. It's terrible. Don't watch it. Highly acclaimed. Bollocks, mate. State of it. OSW4 level quality. <laughs> There's no way to hate this movie. Okay. It's they, you know, here we go, here's screenings of it, here's fans, screenings of it. Everyone usually brings a friend, so it gets kind of bigger each year. And they have stickers with V on it for if this is your first time watching the film, you're a troll virgin. And I was like, the people that watch this film and love it, don't stick virgin on them, you know? <laughs> they have enough of that at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was mean, I wouldn't do it. Uh, but I just did, apparently. Anyway, 2.9 on IMDb. 6% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. That's more like it. Yeah. Let's see what all the fuss is about. Pack your Gansey, we're going to Nilbog. <laughs> Which is killer spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Christ on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, a herd of goblins running around the woods. I say goblins, but I really mean midgets in cheap latex masks wearing potato sacks. In my memory, the costumes in Troll 1 are significantly better. Oh, yeah. This is a sequel. Why, why can't they just reuse assets? Uh-huh. Because... 
you got you got to find it. Neil Bog, yeah, <laughs> Goblin, Troll Two. Why are there no trolls in Troll Two? It's so annoying. They're all goblins. It's so stupid. It's because this film has nothing to do with Troll 1. It was its own film called Goblin, and the producers thought more people would go see it if it was a sequel to Troll. So they just renamed the film. But I would imagine Troll 1 was seen by nobody. (laughs) And that was preferable. So who are they trying to get in to see the movie? The cast (laughs) and their family. Uh, that's about it. Young kid Joshua, the lead, is in bed, visited by his dead grandfather, Seth. He's read a bedtime story, warning him that vegetable goblins will transform his family and eat them all. Um, I just want to point out, as he jumps, there are four camera cuts. And then, even though he jumps forward and is meant to roll, it shows him landing on his back, facing the other way. <laughs> Grandpa Seth is telling me to stop... Josh, buddy. Okay, this is before child actors were any good. Holy shit, mate. Oh, wow. He's not the worst actor in this movie, though. Yeah, because his ma comes in and proves me wrong. (laughs) Every time she speaks in this movie, her eyes just (laughs) nail bog open. (laughs) And they're just so wide. And she's terrifying looking. I can't look at anything else. What are you doing up, Josh? What are you doing still up, Josh? I've never seen a less human character than this. So she's got this line saying, Your grandpa disappeared. It was difficult for me, his daughter. (laughs) (laughs) The problem here... Okay, uh... I don't want to get into it this quickly. Directed by Claudio Fergrasso. He's Italian. Can't speak English. His wife wrote the film... She can't speak English. The crew were Italian. Can't speak English. The cast are English. Can't speak Italian. <laughs> oh my God. And they're Sorry. Like, oh my God. Uh, uh, so they're like, give him the script. And they're like, okay, we'll try punch it up and we'll fix the syntax and the grammar. And he's like, no, read it as is verbatim. And then he cracks them with the whip. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Oh my God. That actually explains a lot. We see Josh's sister, Holly. Sweet statutory. (laughs) Pump those brakes, mister. She's 16 when the film comes out. Her boyfriend, Elliot, sneaks into her room and scares the shit out of her. Odyssey, great bit. Nut shot. Then, are you trying to turn me into a homo? (laughs) And she's like, it wouldn't be hard. I was like, oh, that is good. Release your instincts in the bathroom. Are you nuts? You trying to turn me into a homo? Wouldn't it be too hard? If my father discovers you here, he'd cut off your little nuts and eat them. He can't stand you. And and you? I like you. I don't know if it's the shit writing or the wooden acting, but you can almost see the script being read, you know? So I watched a documentary of it, Best Worst Movie, and the actress would actually go on the internet and read comments about her. But, like, she knew when she watched it that she's really bad. But she went on the internet just to confirm, I guess. <laughs> the bad idea. Don't vanity search. I mean, between having people rip her apart and then the creeps creeping on the child, mm. you're only going into badness here. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, Don't do it. Love. There's nothing to be gained. No. You know, if someone said, oh, that was a great acting job, you know they're lying. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Is it true that your family's going on vacation tomorrow? Yes. I'll come with you. Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. Where are we going? Nilbog, a wonderful half-empty town. Holly convinces Elias to come to Nilbog tomorrow. Don't bring your mates, but he does anyway. So the family come to the town. They're being, like, uh, gawked at by these, like... Yokels. Creepy-looking yokels, yeah. Then they come out and, like, horrifically act, right? This is bad. But in kayfabe... Does this make sense? Because they're not humans. They're goblins pretending to be people. Oh, okay. So, so, wait, wait, wait. Why do the humans act so inhuman then? 
this is where it falls apart. <laughs> here are the keys. Um, here are ours. Enjoy your stay, Nilbog. Arriving at their village home, they find a veritable feast waiting for them. This is amazing. Okay. Whew. Family are going to eat the uh, green goop, which is what the goblins feed people, and it turns them into plants that they can then eat. So, Super Grandad Ghost comes and he pauses time because that's a power that he has once and not to <laughs> save the rest of the <laughs> m- movie. <laughs> and he tells him that he has 30 seconds in which to figure out and come up with a plan to keep his family from eating the food and therefore turning into food. And he then proceeds to spend 29 seconds pensively looking to the side and walking around the table before he before he comes up with his plan, which is to whip it out <laughs> and have a piss. <laughs> First eye. Posh eye. Eye. <laughs> It's fucking amazing. Fucking 10 on 10, though. This is brown trousers. What can you do? It'll work. Yes. It, and how. <laughs> I must do it. I must do it. Holly has a fun line when the ma's cleaning up the ruined food. It's like, oh, big spanking for a little shit. <laughs> Good. Post culinary micturation, the dad is furious and starts unbuckling his belt. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> Prepare your diddle hole. <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't get his Mickey out. You know, Samurai Cop has that big speech in the restaurant. He's talking to Fuji, Fuji about uh, you know, hardworking immigrants and all that. Like the dad has one of his own here saying, "We don't piss on hospitality." <laughs> and you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. Okay, Joshua, you want to get rough with me? Rather than going out to feed his family like a father should, right? That's it. We're on hunger stripe. <laughs> Bobby Sands over here. <laughs> you know, come on, mate. Yes, he's going to tie his belt loop tighter so he doesn't feel the hunger pangs. There we go. As opposed to go Drinking to the shop. Drinking water yeah. or, or, or getting food. Yeah, yeah, go to the shop, mate. By the way, the dad is such a bad act. Like, the mom looks like a creep <laughs> with the eyes. She's not supposed to. <laughs> but the dad is so awful. And why does he spend half of the movie with his shirts open? <gasps> I, I, none of his buttons work in Nilbog. <laughs> hey! Ma'am! Please stop! Arnold, one of Elliot's mates who came up in the caravan with him, sees a girl in distress. <laughs> Just she's not following him, so he pegs it after her and tackles her and mounts her. <laughs> It's like, who's the villain? (laughs) Friend or foe here. He tries to brush off her goblin attackers, but gets a spear to the shoulder instead. That was hilarious. Ah! Arnold and Cindy stumble to a druid, which is Gaff. Hmm. It's Credence Lenore Gielgud. I did not get this name, and she said it so many times in this movie. Mm. Who uses a Stonehenge magic stone to imbue the goblins with power. Uh, yeah. Uh, in need of medical aid, the girl foolishly drinks the green broth she's given and acts up the stairs. Oh. <laughs> acts, you say. Uh, uh, it's... It, you won't look away. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> then the film peaks with Arnold's line. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. It's a, okay, so this line is legendary. Uh, is this the point in the movie where the film just, ah, oh, fuck it? Ooh, I think that the movie said fuck it about 60 to 90 seconds earlier when Crazy Goblin Lady comes in and just says, right, I'm going to out-act <laughs> everybody. 
Allow me to introduce myself. I am Credence Leonor Gilgold of ancient druid origins. The music of the film, they seem to only have like one track played at different speeds. Uh, it's not a bad song. <laughs> Like they have a fruit when the goblins come out, it's like boom, 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 boom. That's just the radicals. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you get well. It's spicy, it's spicy. Oh, back at the house, Holly does an 80s dance routine in the bathroom. You get a, a bit of this, a bit of that. <laughs> what was this? That's what you do when you're a 16-year-old girl in a nil bog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holly has a mirror spot with the deceased uncle. So the family are kind of starting to come around, that little Timmy. Actually, maybe you're telling the truth here. Okay, I love this, how in kayfabe, ghost granddad uh, went to the wrong room. <laughs> he went it's to the good, wrong room. Good. It is funny. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. The next day, the men head to the store to get supplies. The dad gets a few Z's outside the store. We get a weird zoom in on the dad's vegetable cookbook, and then it cuts to a wide shot. I was hoping to see like a cameraman just up in his grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and little Timmy looks in the car side mirror and sees <gasps> Neil Bog is garbage build backwards oh my god who would have thought it steve top 10 backwards words oh <laughs> yes okay number 10 oh uh, actually uh special mention to ultimate warriors one warrior nation the own because it's backwards acronym for the nwo nice i think it's cool Number 10. Nilbog. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way there's nine better than this. Oh, it, This is the zenith. <laughs> See, it's because it's obvious it's not a real word, you know? And it also contains the word bog. <laughs> so does bog mean toilet in any other country bar or errors? Ooh, well. Stick me down toilet. for the Aussies. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Number nine. Oh, no, hold on. That's so perfect. <laughs> we could do that too. Number nine. Ghost trick for the DS. I've never played it. Oh, great game. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very slick, very stylish. Great puzzle game. You have to rewind time and prevent deaths and stuff like that, and you have a time to do it. It's great. It looks awesome. Um, the big TNA finish. Just so many revelations. It's hilarious. Nice. What sets everything in motion is there's a meteor which lands in Temsic, which is backwards for kismet, <laughs> uh, or inverted fate. Is. So it actually makes sense as well. Number eight. Bill and Ted 2's main heel... The Nomalos is Ed Solomon, the writer's name backwards. Nice, which is a nice touch. Uh, number seven. President Scroob in Spaceballs. <laughs> which is Mel Brooks. It's Brooks backwards. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Number six. Splice. This is monster. Dren. Dren. Or nerd backwards. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so lame. What's that from? Oh, Splice. Did you ever see that film? No. No, uh, it's okay. Okay. Uh, it's a sci-fi. Number five. The Dream Theater song, The Itsy Jam? No. no. Uh, it's Majesty, backwards. Ooh. Yeah. It's from When Dream and Day Unite. Okay. I don't know it, actually. Oh. Splice. Well, let's we'll see what copyright has to say. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Mortal Kombat. I was waiting for Ed Boon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Noob Saibot. <laughs> Which is uh, Ed Boon and John Tobias's last surnames backwards. Nice. Who actually morphed into a really cool character by the time they got to Mortal Kombat 9. His gimmick is that he's kind of shadow, can multiply himself in that, right? Yeah, there's like two of them and, you know, he can kind of turn into goop and go into the ground and they, like, pull people in half, like, um, wishbone them, like. Ooh. It's really awesome. Nice. <laughs> Number three. Nod and all. Yeah, from Red Dwarf. London. Uh, yeah, 871 Selim. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. As you some, get something off the Unim. Uh... <laughs> 
Number two. Heavy hitter here. Red Rum. Oh, that's not number one. No. Oh, my goodness. Okay, number one's going to be awesome. Mm. Red Rum. So, yeah, little Timmy writes it on the door, and they, he looks in the mirror. Ah, murder. That's pretty good. Goddamn shinning. Yeah, and you hear it, it's weird, the 70s kind of maracas when he sees it. It's like, chicka, 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 chicka. It's like, that was probably scarier in the 70s. And number one, without question, it's Nilbog again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> From the deepest, darkest corner of Black Rain's mind, <laughs> it's Relic, TNA's Johnny the Bull, or Killer spelled backwards. backwards. Yes, thank you, Mike Tanay. I didn't know that one. <laughs> Because he said that every time he fucking came. <laughs> awesome. So, hey, did you hear that? Uh, yes, very much so. That Hello. was lots of fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Great right. right in the middle of the ring by Relic. Yeah, that's killer spelled backwards. Raven turns his attention to Relic. That's killer spelled backwards. Relic. That's killer spelled backwards. Uh, ha ha. And so you thought it was Alucard there at the end. Swerve the good with Relic. Killer spelled backwards. <laughs> ah, uh, yes, let us know who we missed or who you would have had in your top 10 list that wasn't mentioned here. And comment below. So the family had no food, and the lads who came with uh, in the camper van, they don't have food either. It was like, yeah, well, if you don't bring food, you won't have food. Yeah. <laughs> who goes on a road trip without fucking food? They actually said this. is like, yeah, I was just in a hurry to go. <laughs> All right. Drew and his Bart Simpson looking ass <laughs> head into town to get food. This uh, yellow t-shirt and orange short shorts. And with the bag, yeah, the like Dora bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he gets a ride from the sheriff, and then asks him, "Hey, where did the girls hang out?" <laughs> and the sheriff's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> "Amazing." Where did the girls from around here go at night? <laughs> the girls. <laughs> this is quite brilliant. So clearly, the makers of this movie could not rent or get an actual car that is owned by an actual <laughs> sheriff, right? So what do they do? They get a random white car and they have a sheriff sticker put on the side. But if you look closely, one of the points is actually coming loose. Oh. <laughs> it's like um, Impact Wrestling belt. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> with, with the sticker <laughs> on it. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh. My TNA is getting it in this review. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Who would have thought we referenced TNA when talking about the worst thing ever made? <laughs> Thousands of people around the world tune in to laugh at you people. Shopkeep looks quite gobliny. He is. He Good is. stuff. They're vegetarian, you see, so they only have this gloopy milk, i.e. poison in disguise, which he gives them for free. The store owner was a patient at a mental hospital on day release. And he was stoned out of his bin uh, when they taped this. No memory of the... <laughs> Fuck off. Not acting, you know. So, yeah. He just thought he was an actual goblin <laughs> yeah. giving him milk. <laughs> Eggs. Eh! We're vegetarians here at Nilbog. Didn't you know that? Uh, yeah, Steve, does turning flesh into green gloop does that count as still being vegetarian no of course not vegans all across the world would be furious with you it doesn't matter if it's technically veg or green like you're still killing a living being and eating that being mm. just uh fyi like this storyline in general about eating meat not eating meat this came about because the writer, the director's wife, a couple of her mates turned vegetarian and she was pissed off about it. And that's it. Fuck off. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> and yeah, and then you get this. Uh, we also see the pastor of Nilbog giving a sermon, healing out on meats, saying, oh, fuck you and your burgers and your plump sausages and the hot dogs by the side of the road. And he's like, 
It sounds awesome. It does. It sounds delicious, man. Yeah. <laughs> flesh! And by flesh, I mean all that stinking, disgusting meat. Do you know how many animals, how many of your fellow Earthlings have suffered for this? Shame! Holly is pissed that Elliot is still hanging out with his mates and delivers an ultimatum. Choose me or your mates. And it's like, I don't understand. Kapow! <laughs> I don't understand. Oh. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's quite a funny line. But, you know, in reality, obviously this film is far from reality. But if a woman said to you, choose me or your mates... That's a red flag. Yeah, 100% your mates. Yeah, like uh, any person that says that is not someone that you want to be with yeah. at all. If they want to cut you out from your support, then they will cut you out as well. If they want to isolate you, then they're toxic. You know? Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, funny scene though. Uh, back with Arnold at the Druid Witch's gaff. He's turning into a plant. <laughs> Hurry! Drew tries to pull him to safety by slowly pulling the flat pot. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, shit film, but hey, that was top comic timing. Like I laughed out loud with that. And the prosthetics as well, they're pretty good. It, it's actually not bad. Like uh, I'm going to imagine most of the most of the budget went on this. <laughs> Just this good. Um, Okay, the pot, maybe, because, like, whose shoes are they gluing onto the bottom of the pot? His shoes. They didn't get a second pair of shoes. And he was in that for 14 hours. Fuck off. Yeah. Oh, my Miserable. goodness. Yeah. So, the prosthetics are good. Not so much the, uh, do you like the gr dripping green water from the forehead gimmick? <laughs> Uh, no, but yes, because I love wrestling, and it's like <laughs> Papa Shango. Oh, yeah. man, you're, oh, get, oh, you're get getting it over, over now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which bitch isn't having any of it, and revs up a chainsaw to cut Arnold some slack. What are you going to do to me with that? I'm going to make a nice the ADR in this one, they like obviously the chainsaw is very loud, so they just got her to re record her lines in it, but she's not close. No. If you're wondering why is the dialogue so bad in general, it was like, eh, I'm going to tape it in different languages and sell it abroad so I don't care about the English version. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> the cheek. The goblins are going to take Josh's family, and he's like, Uncle, help me with a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This is the most irresponsible thing that an adult could possibly do. It's a Molotov cocktail. Holy fucking shit. But I love it. Cut it out, kid. Oh, but Josh's plan to burn down the evil town is thwarted. We're barreling towards the finish. The townsfolk have surrounded the family in their gaff. Oh, Jesus. The ma has a quote. Oh, dear God. What can we do? She just... Right into the camera with a Macaulay Culkin home a lot. What the fuck? Did her eyes bog out of her head? <laughs> they nil bogged. They nil bogged. Yeah. Oh dear God, what can we do? See, the cast were only given the script scene by scene. Oh my goodness. Uh, so they had no context or overall idea of how to act, which is obviously the bad actors, and they're not actors. The dad is a dentist, you know? And he still is. And his patient told him the film was out. <laughs> Amazing. Like, yeah, like, so that's why the actors are acting out of place, because they don't know how they're supposed to be acting. Outside, this uh, Terry Funk-sounding cop goblin shouts, Eat the damn sandwiches! <laughs> And then he gets the bag and hoofs it at the fucking door. I'll give him his due. It landed nicely. <laughs> I'm not going to eat a thrown sandwich, then. <laughs> There's sandwiches for tonight in here. Otherwise, we'll be forced to kill you violently. Good thing, though. Thanks for the sandwiches, because there is no proper catering on this film. Oh, my God. Are you serious? You either had leftovers or sometimes pizza. And leftover pizza. Yes. Oh, there we go. That's three things. <laughs> I was thinking when the family go to the Hootenanny Hoedown with all the goblins, they have food there. It's like, well, it's in the film, but like, you know, that's dinner. So yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. We don't, we don't have to buy food now. 
uh, one hour 15 into the film and it just gives up, admits it's a big bag of bollocks. <laughs> Sex jazz music and which bitch comes over your man's TV? What happened here? This is like, n- no, you know what? I don't have words. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? Shall we eat it together? What kind of show is this? I'm not a program. Sexy nighty, sexy garter belt, sexy wiggle. I was like, I know you're going to kill me. Or, actually, yeah, okay. She cleans up fairly well. Oh, what will she do with the corn and the cob? <laughs> Where is she going to put it? Um, cue, <laughs> cue the cast chucking buckets of popcorn at them. I was like, ah. <laughs> I, that was quite funny. I don't understand it. Like, what's going on? I think she was so hot that she that popped, she popped the, the corn. The corn. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it was one corn on the cob, but why is he swimming in it, you know? But there's a mindset saying that the more fun it is on set, the worse a movie is. So this must be the most fun movie ever shot. That anyone's ever had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best crack ever. <laughs> Joshua has to save the day. He splits off from the family, so takes the A storyline. I was thinking, poor Michael Stevenson. Such a young age to be in such a bad film. To have his career ruined. Snuffed out. On day one. Yeah. It's over, mate. Yeah. The lead. There's no escaping this movie. Yeah. You know? He was actually waiting for this to come out on uh, in the cinema so he could watch it and be so happy. It never came out in the cinema. But one day he did get it for Christmas. The VHS popped it in. Wow, shit. Oh, yeah. no. But he is a director now and turned a negative into a positive. He produced the worst, best movie documentary about Troll 2. Okay. There you okay. Go. And a couple other tidbits there as well. And look, mate, regardless of how bad you feel or how bad things were, you are miles away from being the worst thing in this movie. Yeah, yeah. There's his character <laughs> is one of the most <laughs> annoying things in the movie, but his acting chops not the worst. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get a nailed choke spot <laughs> with the <laughs> goblin and Joshua. Yeah. I love this abuse towards kids on camera. <laughs> yeah, you only get it in the eighties or early nineties. But Grandpa Joe, <laughs> Grandpa Joe, Grandpa Uncle, Uncle Father, Grandpa comes to the rescue and kapow, bam. Yeah, and gives us a nice smile. I like yeah. it. Are you going to do, little one? A choke spot by Witchy, and the goblins take him away. Uh, I thought, oh, at this point, the film outstays its welcome. It's like there's a boring ten minutes of just running around the house. And uh, did you like the part where the daughter and her boyfriend get Pearl Harbored from the front? <laughs> I did. It's like, but that's for different reasons than the movie. There's no possible way that you couldn't have seen this big goblin waiting for you to walk past. It's Uh, impossible. Oh, and how does Joshua save the day? He eats a double bologna sandwich. It's so fucking stupid. So Grandpa saves him, and just before he like disappears, he gives him a bag. And says, you only open it when you need it. And this will save your life. And yeah, it turns out to be a bologna sandwich, (laughs) which he uses to fight the power of Stonehenge. (laughs) Q Q Spinal Tap. Is it a full-size Stonehenge? (laughs) or 14 inches. (laughs) Oh, excellent. Yes, he eats the double bologna sandwich, uh, which makes witchy bitchy bug out. No! No! Steve, take us through the finish. So, Grandad now has the power to also cast spells, and he has the power to make 16 bolts of lightning that are the exact same. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> um, land and kills all of the goblins. Oh, that's handy. Despite the movie being called Troll. <laughs> Yeah, so the family go find little Timmy at Stonehenge and rah, 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 defeat the goblins, and they return home. I need to go home for a while. I'll come with you. Epilogue! Everyone can rest easy, and the man goes for a shower. But no! The son bursts into the shower. A dangerous game, my friend. That's, yeah, that's your ma. Yeah, just just start said I'm going for a shower, mate. She's just there with her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> But doesn't find her, finds green sludge. The goblins have won. They come down and they're all eating the rest of the family and they're like, do you want some? Joshua? <laughs> and end scene. <laughs> Curtain down. That is the radicals, isn't it? It, 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 it pretty much yeah, is, yeah. I can't, I can't not yeah. do it. All right. Want some Joshua? Made it back from uh, Nilbog. Made it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're back alive. 871 Salem. What did you think of Troll 2? <sighs> <laughs> okay, this is one of, if not the worst movie I've ever seen. It has some of the worst writing, the worst acting, the stupidest plot, the worst payoffs... This is a short movie. It's like 90 minutes long, but it felt so much longer. This is so fucking bad, but it's not so bad that it goes full fucking circle and becomes awesome like Samurai Cop or The Room. It just merely goes nearly full circle and it's just in the worst part of this is awful. (laughs) But I loved talking about it. I had (laughs) so much fun here. uh, Okay, you got something good out of it. Um, Yeah, I agreed with you. I see where they're going with that it's so bad, it's good. Uh, It's not for me. Like yourself, it stopped short of becoming amazingly good. That said, there are some bits that I quite enjoyed and maybe it'll all come together when I watch it 30 times to edit it. (laughs) You know, and I... Stockholm Syndrome love it. (laughs) You know, so... Troll 2, its legacy is that it's frequently shown at horathons and film festivals and friendly screenings. In 2007, there was a major Troll 2 event in Morgan, where it was filmed in Utah, dubbed the Nilbog Invasion. <laughs> uh, hundreds of... Ter- a T2. I was like, no way you can be T2 right now. No, no, no. no. Cheek. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of Troll 2 fans gathered at the town with the cast and crew and the director and the mayor gave him a giant green foam key to the city. That's fun. And said, yeah, you've my blessing to film Troll Tree. <laughs> More films have been made, but not direct sequels, but indirectly known as it, like The Crawlers is Troll Tree or No Control <laughs> or uh, Quest for the Mighty Sword, which has the same goblin outfits. So, you know, no direct sequel. Uh, at the Nilbog Invasion, the director said, oh, I'd love to do Troll Tree, but that kind of just fell through. Um, but all these kind of indirect sequels, it's proof that being the worst can still be pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> you can't piss on hospitality. I'm all out. <laughs> So that does it for Troll 2 and another Nugger You Film Review. Man, thanks so much for coming out, Stevie. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure, mate. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed our review of Troll 2. And obviously, the last one we did was Filmed Head's Bogus Journey. And thank you to Michael Coleman Jr., uh, who chose this for us. Well, you know, I fucking took some of my life there, mate. Cheers, bro. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, fuck off. <laughs> what have we got in the magic bag? In the sack magic. In the in the Kijim. 
Cass. <laughs> Zach Majeed backwards. <laughs> um, we don't know. You'll find out. Ah, well, we know, do we? I, I, I don't know. I haven't discussed it with you. We may No, you no? did. What have we got? Well, oh, what's next on the list? What have we got in the magic bag? The, the, no, I'm not saying that again. And we've Battle Royale. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Thank God. Oh, my God. And. What's the fucking other one? What's the other one? Buddy. <laughs> it's a biodome. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I've never seen Biodome. Yeah, you thought you hated Troll 2. <laughs> Wait for the DVD goodness of <laughs> Biodome. Oh, my God. And your boy, Polly Shore. Ooh, it's going to be. <laughs> I might cut it because I might want to change it. I don't know if I could take it. Uh, anyway, so join us here next time on Nogger U for another dose of uh, J. Oh, I was going to say JMV, one goodness. That sounds quite inappropriate. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, uh, let's just cut it right there. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a fucking boo. And myself, J Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. Hang on. You're going to backwards it? Yeah, that's it. No, it doesn't really work. Like, U O Y. Ooey. And remember, Ooey C Renu A. Oh, wait. Boom, 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 beep, boom, boom, beep, boom, boom, beep, boom, beep, boom, boom, boom. A double decker bologna sandwich! Whoa!